Welcome to the Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. My name is Juan Limpius and I'm working for the Oracle Application Development Tools and Mobility Tools Product Management Team. In this episode, I talk about RESTful services that have a JSON payload and how you consume those services in a MAF mobile application. Before going into details, let's see what the options in general are for working with RESTful services in MAF. The first option I introduced in a previous episode is to use the REST data control, which is suitable for working with XML payloads. In this recording, the option I'm introducing is to work with RESTful services that have a non-XML payload, by example, JSON. It's a Java approach in the beginning, but then once you wrap this Java access to the RESTful service and a data control, the rest is, as I presented before, all declarative and visual in the development of mobile application clients. So let's have a look at how the RESTful access works if it's done against a JSON payload. Well, Douglas Crockford, one of the godfathers of JSON and one of the driving forces behind RESTful services, as my understanding is, uh, once said that JSON is the fat-free alternative to XML. And that's true in many ways. As we will see, JSON is a very straightforward text-based payload, whereas XML is more structured. So for every key value um, pair, we do have an element, an XML tag that we have to put in that identifies the element, so like the department ID, plus some attributes and the value. So it comes with a lot more content for the same set of information. And that's exactly what JSON is addressing here. So here's an example JSON payload. If we look at that, there are three characteristics here. So there's one that deals with primitives, like the department's key value pair. So department ID here is set to 60. And then there is an object. And you see an object is identified by curly brace. Now for the image in this example, we have additional attributes that we care for. We care for a name, we care for the source on the server where we can pull down the image, and we care probably for the size of the image so that we can render it well on the user interface. And then there is a collection, and you see the collection is nothing else than just uh, square brackets and they're wrapping objects. In this case, these are employee records, and as you see, the notation of it is purely text-based, so very lean, and all that you need to do is, in the end, to pass that information into real Java objects, assuming the platform is Java, as it is in math. So, what are the architecture elements when we want to consume this kind of services within MAF. Well, first of all, we need to have a connection to the REST service. Now, for this, we do have a connection wizard. So you find that in the File New gallery, from Gallery, and then you go to the Connections setting, and you create a new REST connection, which is just a pointer to the endpoint, which is the resource, the URL, where we can access the RESTful service. From then on, we just work with the name of the service. So you don't have to repeatedly put in the full access details to that resource. And then there is a REST service adapter, which is a Java object that we provide within the MAR framework. Now this REST service adapter is an object that allows you to pull down the connection and then send whatever request you want to send to the RESTful service, parameterized or not, and then get the response and return the response to the MAF application. So you can see that this adapter is a little bit like a proxy that we use between the data control side that you will later on and the RESTful service side. And then there is a helper class that we provide, which is a JSON serialization bean helper that allows you to take the response, which still is JSON, and to map that response to an object structure because in Java, it's easier to work with objects than constantly to pass strings. So, there is one more element here, well, actually two elements. Now, if we really go the end-to-end -end scenario where we want to pull data from a RESTful service and expose that to MAF for declarative use in a data control, then we have to transform the payload into Java objects, I mentioned that, and then expose this as a collection. Now the collection is what we call the service object. Now this is typically what you would expose as a POJO data control, and we talk about POJO data control in a later episode in specific. Well all that a POJO actually does is it introspects a POJO bean and then exposes 
this as a Pojo data control. This is what the Pojo data control is doing. Yeah? And for our REST use case, you will have a collection that has a setter and a getter, which is a public, and then it returns an array of a data object. Now, the data object is probably better known as an entity. Now, if I have an employee that I uh, return from a RESTful service, then the employee is my entity. So it has attributes like first name, last name, employee ID, salary, and so on. Now, this object is what I provide, and this object then will be returned by the service object so that I can work with that in the data control, and the data control palette will actually show the structure of that object so I can use drag and drop for building my mobile applications. As simple as that. Here is an example. So from my graph or from my math user interface here, I issue a request. And the request goes through the binding layer, as we learned in a previous episode. And then it hits the REST adapter, which is part of this uh, data service provider. Now, this request then will be sent out to the RESTful service. And the RESTful service replies whatever collection or whatever information is associated with that request. So if I'm querying a collection of employees from my database, then the RESTful service will return a JSON payload that contains all of these in, and, and I've shown you that before, in kind of a curly braces for identifying each object, and that is wrapped in square brackets. And that is what you get back. Now you have to pass that back in, and for this I mentioned that we have the JSON bean serialization helper that helps you to take the payload that comes from the server and stuff it into your local client-side objects, the entities. And then you're good to go because then you can expose a collection, an array of these uh, components, and from then on, the rest is all declarative. So you don't have to worry about it. From a conceptual point of view, you can say that, well, if there is such a thing like a data service or a data service model developer in your team who is just knowing about how to access and to deal with RESTful service, this developer would create kind of helper classes, utility classes to make work with the RESTful service easier and probably even expose the model. And the rest of the team would just build applications based on that model. So how do you build a REST connection? I mentioned that we need to have a REST connection. Well, one way of doing that is just to go to the new gallery. I mentioned that as well. And then in the uh, connection settings, you just pick the REST connection and it will step you through. So you will provide us with information about the endpoint, which is the endpoint of the root resource usually. And from then on in REST, you have it parametrized. And I showed you that in a previous episode. So you might want to go back if that is the first time you're uh, touch basing with REST for services. If there is a requirement for authentication, you provide that information as well. And then you hit the test button. If that is successful, then, well, we're happy, you're happy, so you hit OK, and that will create the entry. You find in the Application Resources panel on the left-hand side in Oracle J Developer the resource, and that will also allow you to uh, change the resource in just hitting the right mouse button, choosing Properties, and that will allow you to change the endpoint. So if you later on need to move from uh, test server that hosts the RESTful service to a production server, that is the easy way to change the connection. And you can see the beauty of that solution because in your code you will just reference the name of that connection and not the details of the connection. So that saves you a lot of time and work in case that the REST connection endpoint changes. So let's go a bit into the coding so that you get an idea. Hope you're ready. Well, I can't save you some Java code here. So better is you just move closer, closer. OK, that's it. So that's the right distance. So now look at the code here. So I created a wrapper method. So I kind of built my own utility here. And that utility, as I knew it was for JSON, so it just took all the variable arguments in there. So I need the user to pass in the method, the HTTP method. And that HTTP method could be uh, get, post, put. So that is the information that my method will receive and deal with later on. Then I need to get the re request URI. Now the request URI, that could be a very dynamic URI in a sense that it is parametrized, or that could be a kind of a base URI like um, 
resources, rest, slash departments, just to give me all departments. But it could also be department slash 10, just to give me departments 10. And then I need to get a payload. Now the payload is needed uh, for every queryable collection. Now if I go for all, if I have a get request, usually this doesn't require um, a payload. I just send an empty body and get the collection back. However, if it's a post or a put to create or to update a new object, then I have to send this as a JSON payload. And this is what this argument accepts. So now the next slides, they show you in detail how you work with that in math. Well, first of all, the REST service adapter is what I get an instance from by calling model create REST service adapter. And then I call clear properties because the clear properties is important to make sure I always start with a fresh base. Just in case, uh, creating a new instance should always return a fresh instance of that, but you know, better be safe than sorry. So clearing everything that it potentially could have. And then after that, I set the connection to the name of the connection I created before. So here you see it's HR REST connection. Whatever server that is pointing to doesn't matter to this point in time because all I need is the name of the connection. So that's the basic setup. So let's continue. In the next set, I'm setting the request type and this is the HTTP method. So if I want to issue a GET request that goes with GET, HTTP GET or PUT or POST. And then I add two more properties. One is for the content type and one is for the accept type. Well, the content type, in case I'm sending uh, a put or a post request, will describe what format my arguments are. So if I send a new employee object for persistence on the server, I will tell it this is a JSON payload. Or I can even tell it this is an XML payload. And based on that setting, the server, if it understands the payload, will know what to do with the argument. And then I have the accept header. Well, that is my information to the server. What is the payload type or format that my mobile application client would expect? So in this case, it's JSON. So I put in application slash JSON. If that was a vendor specific uh, service that returns a different payload, you would use that media type in the request to the server. So now we have it almost set up. So last thing that's really missing here is to provide the request URI. Now that's the URI to the RESTful resource. So if it's department 10, then I would put in the URI, which is departments slash 10, just to indicate department 10 or whatever you want to do with. Retry limits. Now that's like um, how long will the class wait in case the first connection to the RESTful service is not successful. So will it retry the, the call? Well, it's up to you. Usually it would take just zero because if the service isn't available one time, so chances are very high, it's not available the second time either. And then you send it with the payload. Now, as said, if it's a GET request, you don't have a payload, so you just send an empty string. So you can parameterize this. You see, I put this into a helper method. And as you will see, when you work with the RESTful uh, adapter, it's always the same kind of boilerplate code and you just need to parameterize a wrapping method according to your needs. And then more or less you can create your helper infrastructure based with Java classes. You know, in my sample, which I will publish um, on a website uh, to a later point in time, you will see I even wrapped the URI of the RESTful service in a Java class, which of course fixes me to that RESTful service. But if it's an application built just for that RESTful service, why not? So the response that I'm getting back from uh, the RESTful service is JSON. Now, what I have to do is I have to make sure that I need to pass that into a Java object. Now, to do that, I will use a uh, framework functionality, which is a, a JSON bean serialization helper. But there is more than that. There is uh, an object called JSON array. Now, this JSON array object represents an array a collection within the JSON response. In fact, what I need to do is I need to do um, a mapping of the structure of the response. So I need to know about the structure of the response and map that into a Java object. And the Java object should have properties with setter and getter so that exactly match the returned response in JSON. So for collections like my employees example, I will use JSON array. 
So I will have a property like JSON array ems equals null, and then I create set and getter for that. If there is an additional attribute sent, maybe a primitive like a department ID and this is a value 60, I will have a property JSON object and department ID. And that actually then will mimic the structure and that will allow me to take the payload and pass that into this Java object. And the JSON array will of course then hold employees or objects of type employee, my entity. Sounds complex, but it's not. It's really simple Java coding here. So let me give you an example. So here I have a JSON result array, well, which is just a Java class I created. This JSON result array just has one property, which is JSON array. And this JSON array is expected to take um, objects of type department, where in fact it takes JSON as a payload, but I would transform that into departments. So the JSON serialization helper then is what I create an instance of, and then I call uh, on the JSON beam serialization helper from JSON. And now you see I pass my class, my structure class, let's call it that way, and uh, pass in the response that I'm getting from the RESTful service. Now what this helper now does is it looks in the structure of that response and tries to map it to the Java class that I provide as the holder of the information. Yeah? So in the end I will turn up with an object and that object now contains a JSON array of department objects. So this is a full transition from JSON into Java I'm doing here. So that gave you a summary of um, how to work with RESTful services. As said, it's halfway uh, Java because the rest now is just to click on the uh, data service object that you created up front, right mouse click and create a portrait data control and then you work with that in math.